When you work out, do you need to be going all out all the time? Or could you start with like little bite-sized chunks of exercise in order to get started with your workouts? One thing that we consistently find that as a deterrent is that people think they may need to be doing too much exercise, which causes them to not want to exercise to begin with. On today's episode of the Exercises Health Podcast, Julie and I discuss this topic and what considerations you should be taking when deciding how much exercise you should be doing on a regular basis. We're going to cue the intro song and then we're going to dive right in to this conversation. Welcome to the Exercise is Health podcast, where we're talking about exercise, health, and the interconnectedness of the two. We are your hosts, Charlie and Julie, and we will be coming to you every single week from our studio, Muscle Activation Schaumburg. Hey, welcome back, everybody, to the Exercise is Health podcast. We are your hosts, Charlie and Julie, and we're coming to you from our studio, Muscle Activation Schaumburg, here in Schaumburg, Illinois. Now, at Muscle Activation Schaumburg, we believe your health is your most valuable asset, and the single best thing that you can do to both boost and protect this asset is exercise. Specifically, exercise is geared towards building the health and function of your muscles. And if you're looking for an uber convenient way to do this from your own home with workouts that last less than 25 minutes and require minimal equipment, then you need to check out the MAS Home Workouts Program. This program contains over 100 workouts to help you get your resistance training in, your cardio in, and make sure your joints stay moving well and you stay feeling well overall. So to learn more about this program and download your copy today, go to homeworkout.matschaumburg.com. So today we're discussing a topic that runs across a lot of people's minds, and that's, you know, how much exercise do I actually need to be doing? especially if I want to get started because a lot of times people when they begin exercise there may be this grandiose plan of all right you know I'm going to go to the gym three times a week you know 60 minutes every time I'm going to do these classes I'm going to use these machines I'm going to do this cardio and it can seem very overwhelming and that can actually be a large deterrent for a number of people from starting to work out to begin with. So if, especially if you're just starting to exercise or you're wanting to get into exercise, we have some things to think about if you are concerned with like how much exercise you think you may need to be doing. Charlie, I love this topic because there are so many avenues I guess we could take this conversation and we'll probably touch on a handful of them, but there's a few pieces to this. This idea specifically is pertaining to like if you're just getting started. But there's also some other places where this question or this idea might come up and we can certainly talk about that. But first of all, I think when we're thinking about exercise, there are cert- there are a few things. Number one is figuring out how it's going to fit in your schedule. So this is kind of like logistics of am I going to get to exercise or is this going to be enough? The other thing is the doing of the exercise, meaning if I walked for five minutes, could my body handle that? Or if I jogged for five minutes or 10 minutes or 20 minutes, how whatever you think is a small amount, um, could I tolerate that? When this topic came up, I was actually thinking about this story that I had read about on, uh, I think one of my social media pages about this man that does ice things. And let me explain it because I don't think the the title that I just gave was a very good description. So I was reading this article on this man that believed in a much of the health benefits of being submerged in really, really cold temperatures. So he would do things like go in ice baths and he trained himself to walk in snow for forever and um, things of that nature. But when you think about training for that kind of event, you kind of can think about it like training for exercise. Number one, do you have time to spend an hour sitting in snow? Well, maybe one day you will, but probably if you don't currently do it, it's kind of hard to conceptualize finding an additional hour in your day because I know that we're all busy. But the second biggest thing is, could I tolerate sitting in snow for a whole hour? That would be freezing cold and that would be really difficult to tolerate for a whole hour. So if you were to think about how could I train to be a cold submersion type person, would I first think about, okay, every day I'm going to submerge myself into the icy cold Lake Michigan for a whole hour? Probably not. One, because you couldn't handle it. And number two, because you probably couldn't think about where would I find the extra hour to do this, plus drive over to the lake to do this, etc. 
So when you think about starting exercise, it's not a terrible bad thing, and it's probably actually a good thing to start with small doses each and every day. If you were going to train for ice submersion, you might start with hmm, 15 seconds each day. Number one, because it's easy to fit it into your day, and number two, because your body is not conditioned to tolerate that. Oftentimes when it comes to exercise, we forget about the time component and the conditioning component. We think, oh, well, you know, I want to start running for my health. So the first day, I think I'll go run for three miles. Well, three miles might take you 45 minutes to an hour. Do you have that kind of time to dedicate to running? Well, Maybe, maybe not. And if you don't, it's not a terrible thing to do less. And then second of all, could your body tolerate that kind of exposure to exercise? We really struggle, I think, oftentimes to conceptualize this idea of, can I handle that type of exercise exposure? Especially because what we see in the media about exercise is always this grandiose, large exercise bout. And actually, if you get up and walk for five minutes each and every day, that's much better for your health than not walking for five minutes a day. And if you're training to jog, great, we'll go for a mile walk or jog and just jog for 15 seconds at a time so that your body can learn to be exposed to this stress, this stress called exercise and gain conditioning and to be able to tolerate more one day. You know, Julie, that's a really wonderful analogy. And I think one of the things that is difficult from an exercise perspective is often there is this this aspect of like motivation and being excited about it that can come at the beginning which can kind of fuel the desire to like okay you know I'm going to do my my classes you know 3 times a week I'm going to do my workouts for 60 minutes I'm going to do all this stuff you know when you're motivated and when you're excited and you want to add it all in but Like you were saying, Julie, you know, that can actually be quite detrimental to your body, especially if your body isn't prepared for it. And if you're not conditioned for it, kind of like, you know, sitting, like you were saying in ice cold Lake Michigan uh, for an hour that in you're you're not used to doing that. So one of the things that we see is, you know, I mean, we can look at any single uh, January that comes around every year um, is that people get really motivated at the beginning and they are relatively consistent and then... And then slowly, uh, that motivation wears off, that excitement wears off, and then the inconsistency starts to creep in. So one thing that you can do to start to combat that is from the get-go, kind of do exercise in a way that is more sustainable for your body, that is more appropriate for your body, that is more a, of a reasonable time demand on your schedule, something that you can actually stick with for the long term. And I think part of the deterrent of that is people think, well, you know, if I go really hard at the beginning, you know, I'm going to get great results in six weeks. And I'm not going to say that that's not the case, but I will also say that that's also not the point. Meaning you might have something six weeks from now that you want to be like beach ready for or whatever. But at the end of the day, exercise in our perspective is something that you should be able to do for life. So yeah, while you might be able to get really quick short-term results, those results are largely not going to be sustainable, number one. And number two, exercising in a way that gets you really quick short-term results also requires actions that are not sustainable. So not only are the results not sustainable, but the actions that you took in order to get those results are not sustainable. So the question that, that you know, we kind of circle back to is like, all right, what is something that you can start doing now that would be reasonable from a time perspective, that would be a reasonable step for your body as far as, you know, your conditioning level and your comfort level with exercise and everything like that, and that you see yourself being able to do repeatedly, not just for the next six weeks or the next six months, but really for the foreseeable future. And if there are are times where you can start to increase the intensity or increase the volume, awesome. If there are times where you need to cut back a little bit. Fantastic. But at the end of the day, this serves as like a benchmark of like, okay, I know that I can do this 
for the next five years, for the next 10 years, for the next 20 years, and then I just make small tweaks and small changes to it as my conditioning changes, as my fitness changes, and as the demands of my life change. Charlie, I love that you brought up the importance of that consistency piece. Yes, exercise can bring about short-term, awesome, cool results, but the results that Charlie and I usually work with our clients with will be those long-term health-changing outcomes that exercise can bring about. So again, we're always asking the question, well, what can we do now that you can sustain uh, for the long term? Because that's what we're really looking for. The other place I mentioned this conversation can be applied to someone that's not just starting out. And that would be applied to if you have some area of your body or an entire area of your body that becomes out of service. And what I mean by this is if you have a joint issue or let's say you have a, a surgery somewhere or you have a uh, something going on with your body that takes you away from exercise for a little bit, these concepts can also be applied to you. So they can be really easily applied to people that are just starting out and then also applied to when someone has something going on with their body that sets them back a little bit or a specific area of their body that sets them back. For example, let's say you get a knee replacement. Well, a lot of times if you get some kind of surgery somewhere, or let's say you have a knee issue going on, we often think, well, just avoid the knee. Let's just not work the knee. Let's just let the knee rest. Well, we do have to keep the muscles of that area still strong. So using these concepts can also be applied to that kind of situation. So first of all, we want to think about time. Okay, so a lot of times when you start exercising, it's really difficult to find time to exercise. Why? Well, we get it. You're busy. But second of all, you've never had to orient your day or situate your day or put it in your schedule to exercise. And so sometimes that can feel like a really big and daunting task. Where an easy place to start is to just find little parts of your day where you can get up and move and start moving your body. And this is a way to not overthink it, find a way to move. And again, this can still be impactful for your health. Specifically, this is actually the kind of exercise that Charlie and I have talked about in the past called all the time exercise. It's just where you're moving through little bouts of your day. And you're not having to change your clothes or put on gym clothes or put on, you know, your running shoes. You're just moving and walking to the mailbox or parking a little further from the grocery store to walk a little bit further. So little bouts that you can find throughout your day to move is actually a really great place to start with exercise. Now, if we're going to apply this to that joint specific one or that condition specific example that I gave, and I gave the example of the knee issue or the knee replacement surgery, Finding times in your workout to specifically work on that area, even if it's one or two reps, even if it's one minute of exposure, that's a good opportunity to build up and find time to focus on that area, even if you're not going to be spending a whole hour doing this, which is often, again, what we think about when we think about exercise. We think we have to be exercising for an hour long time or else it's just not going to impact our health at all. Yeah, the all the time exercise is a really big thing, Julie. And I I would say out of, you know, all the ways of exercising, this is probably one of the most overlooked ways of exercising because a lot of times people discount it as exercise altogether. But as you and I have discussed many times over on this podcast and throughout our videos, being able to use exercise to prevent insulin resistance, which can lead to heart disease and type 2 diabetes and a whole slew of other issues, really is dependent on making sure that you are being physically active throughout your day. And so this all the time exercise is an awesome way to get that in. And like you were saying, the cool thing is, is you don't need to be doing it for, you know, 60 minutes at a time. In fact, that makes it far less effective. What's way more effective is when you you break it up little bits throughout your day. So with that in mind, you know, doing these little bits of exercise, you know, on a consistent basis every day, throughout your day, it's really important for your overall health, whether or not you're, you're just starting with exercise or not. And then I loved where you went with it with, you know, talking about kind of joint specific stuff. Yeah. If you're coming back from an injury or a surgery or some kind of other trauma, if you have some area of your body, that's not feeling like it's a hundred percent, you know, just kind of easing it back in, even if the rest of your body is, is, uh, in better physical condition, 
that can really help those areas. But an- another place that I want to go with this, another thing to think about is not only from the time perspective, like you had said, but then also from, you know, like the intensity perspective and kind of getting your body better conditioned and better able to handle higher workloads and handle uh, longer bouts of exercise. So, you know, if you think about like a- anything that you've done throughout your life and you have progressed with in one form or another, you have always started from a place of relatively lower conditioning. So if we talk about it from the perspective of like reading, it's kind of like asking the question, okay, you know, if I'm just starting out reading, you know, is it all right to practice the alphabet every day or should I be trying to read encyclopedias, you know, right from the get go? And, you know, obviously if you're just learning to read, it's probably easier to start off with, you know, practicing the alphabet every day and then, you know, make it maybe working your way into some Dr. Seuss books or something like that. And then eventually you can get to like the really, you know, heavy textbooks and things of that nature, if that if that's even of interest to you. But a lot of times we find that from an exercise perspective, people dive right into the, you know, the metaphorical textbook side of things. Uh, they, they're going into the, you know, hard and heavy information uh, right from the get go. And again, just from a sustainability standpoint, uh, this makes it really difficult for people to keep up. I mean, I think, you know, most, uh, kindergartners, first graders, whenever, you know, kids are learning to read these days, you know, if they were to be presented with, you know, a full set of encyclopedias kind of breaking down every single bit of information on every single thing um, ever known, well, that's going to feel really overwhelming and it may not be that interesting to them. And, you know, sure. Yeah. There, there's one or two kids out of, you know, hundred thousand or however many that are like, Oh, I'm all about it. But m- most kids are more interested in say reading like, you know, green eggs and ham or cat in the hat or something like that. Why? Because it's easier and it's more entertaining and it's something that they feel like they can accomplish and come back to and kind of master and get better with and then from there they can you know slowly build up their reading ability and the the difficulty of the text that they're reading over time Whereas with exercise, you know, when people are first starting off, you're going right into, you know, the group fitness class that everybody is in, you know, regardless of your ability levels. And sure, yeah, I mean, they might throw out different exercise modifications and like, here's the easy version, here's a, you know, the harder version or something like that. But again, for a, a lot of people, it just ends up being too much for their body. And, and so they end up not exercising consistently, or at least not doing that form of exercise consistently. Um, and, and they end up kind of bouncing around from one form of exercise to the next until they decide to either, you know, stop exercising altogether, uh, or their body tells them that it's time for them to stop exercising altogether because what they're doing is just flat out too much for their body. Okay. So to recap, exercising for small amounts has numerous health benefits and is very important even when you cannot be exercising for large amounts or for grand events. Again, oftentimes people dismiss exercise when they can't commit to an hour or they can't commit to five days a week or they can't commit to some other large big goal. And that is missing the point of exercise. Exercise can give you so many health benefits, even if you're doing it for small amounts of time. And actually, there are a lot of health benefits to starting with small amounts of time. Number one, in getting you practice putting it in your schedule. And number two, getting your body conditioned and prepared for more if in the future you're able to add more. You always have to start, just like Charlie said, by learning the alphabet before you learn how to say words and before you learn how to read books and before you learn how to read the encyclopedia. So starting with that small amount is a great place to start, whether you're starting out with exercise or you're having to be a little more gentle with certain areas of your body. Small amounts are what will create those larger amounts and they will be the stepping stones to being able to one day do bigger amounts if that is part of your goal. So who do you know that needs to hear this episode? Who do you know that is considering starting to exercise, but they're concerned about how much time they feel like they're going to have to put in at the start in order to see any benefits? 
share this episode with them so they can learn that exercise is not something that needs to be done for hours upon hours upon hours, day after day after day, in order to start to see any benefit. You can see tremendous health benefits from exercise just from starting by doing a little bit of movement throughout your day and doing that on a consistent basis. And while you're online, head on over to iTunes and leave us a rating and review. It helps people find this podcast when they're looking for information on exercise and when they're looking for information on health. So if you found value in this conversation today, let us know by leaving us that five-star rating and review. Well, thanks so much for tuning in. We always appreciate it. Have a fantastic week. We'll talk with you all next week. Hey there, it's Charlie again. One last thing, I want to let you in on a secret project that I've been working on for quite some time now. I am planning on releasing a book by the middle of summer 2021. But here's the thing, because I'm self-publishing this book, there's only going to be a limited number of copies available at any given time. So to learn more about this book and to be one of the first to find out when this book actually gets released, what I need you to do is go to exerciseforlifemethod.com. There you'll find out more information as well as some exclusive bonuses that I'm offering just for simply staying in the loop with what's going on with this book. So to learn more and claim your bonuses, go to exerciseforlifemethod.com, enter in your information, and you'll be automatically kept up to date. Learn all about the book and bonuses at exerciseforlifemethod.com. This podcast is for information purposes only. The statements and views on this podcast are not medical advice. This podcast, including Julie and Charlie Gates, disclaim responsibility for any possible adverse effects from the use of information contained herein. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. This podcast does not make any representations or warranties about guest qualifications or credibility. This podcast may contain paid endorsements or advertisements for products or services. Individuals on this podcast may have a direct or indirect financial interest in products or services referred to herein. If you think you have a medical issue, consult a licensed physician.